Finishing a 3D print with no sanding, no stress, no paint, and still awesome results like this. It's in today's video and it's coming up next. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead. Today I'm bringing you a quick video on how you can finish a 3D print with just a couple settings and a couple accessories that'll still give you great results. So today's video is gonna highlight silk printing and I am doing it using a Jason mask. And I'm also showing you how you can add some decals and some other tips and tricks to give really great results with minimal effort. It all starts on the slicer with some settings. So without any further ado, let's hop over to Cura and I'll show you some settings and getting this thing printed. All right, so looking at the build plate here, settings aside, the number one most important thing is gonna be the position of your print when you're trying to print something as clean as possible. We know that when we 3D print, no matter what layer height we do, we have that little stepping uh, pattern and it's gonna build up at the chin area on this one. So we're trying to minimize that to as much as possible. So you can see here, that's where the end of the print is gonna occur. We're gonna have that little bit of stepping. So that's really the most uh, inconspicuous place we can put it. We wouldn't wanna put the print flat because if we do it flat, um, it's going to step right in the middle right in between the eyes and that's just going to look really really bad We can't sand this we're just printing it So this is really the best position for the print by far now I did mention the little stepping pattern There are some settings here that we can use to mitigate it uh, Obviously layer height is going to be super important I recommend when doing a silk print or a regular print if you're trying to get it to be as clean as possible a 0.2 layer height or smaller going down the line covering my other settings here uh, I am using a 0.4 nozzle so wall thickness we want to do 1.2 with a wall line count of three uh, top and bottom thickness uh, I'm gonna run a one millimeter on here with my top layers at four and my bottom layers at three uh, you can change this but I do like to add that extra top layer just to hide things like infill and stuff like that especially on silk prints you will notice I do have ironing enabled here and that will also help with the end of the print and try to help mitigate uh, that stepping that's gonna occur there on the chin uh, my infill density we are using silk so you want to make it a little bit thicker or silk is a little bit more delicate so I'm using 14% if you're using PLA or PETG that can be as low as somewhere around 8% honestly uh, I like to use the infill pattern of lines I've talked about this before it doesn't bleed through as much your infill overlap percentage you can bump that down quite a bit so the infill pattern doesn't bleed through I leave that at 7 printing temperature is going to depend on what your temp tower shows uh, I am using Sunlu PLA that came out best at right between 206 and 208 uh, my print speed very very important I don't like to exceed 65 millimeters per second pretty much let everything kind of automate themselves and adjust uh, but 55 to 65 this one I'm gonna try to kick down print time so I am doing 65 millimeters per second a slower print speed is always gonna result in better quality on most standard 3d FDM printers with that though we want to control our travel speed and both our jerk and acceleration on our printing so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my travel speed down to 110 my acceleration I'm gonna have at 275 millimeters per second and my jerk at 8 millimeters per second these are substantial higher so turning those down again the hot end is going to move much more smoothly it's not going to move really fast and then come to an abrupt stop things like that you can definitely result in some impurities in your print Retraction is going to be based on your retraction test. The best results came up with a six millimeter at 30 millimeters per second. Uh, we are also going to use a uh, combing mode, not in skin. Uh, that way it is not going to comb on the skin part, which is the outermost part of our 3D print. Also, we are going to click avoid printed parts when traveling and avoid supports when traveling. We do not want it hitting any of those that could be detrimental to the print if a support or something blows out, we are not gonna be able to fix it because we're not sanding it. Also, Z-hop when retracted. When a retraction occurs, the nozzle is going to lift up. That is very key. That way it is not dragging over the end part where that print is finished. It doesn't chew it all up and make it look sloppy. Moving on to supports, this is gonna really vary model to model, so take this as a fine grain of salt. For the Jason mask, I did a 74 degree overhang, which is very, very high, but I knew it didn't need a lot of supports the way the mask was positioned. Regular supports, uh, the pattern I like to use is zigzag, and you don't need your supports you know, super, super thick as far as infill density goes, so I usually run mine between three and four. Between those two, it'll pop right off. Now, you can use tree supports. The benefit to tree supports is it's gonna save you time. The downfall to it is it's gonna use more material. When you reduce your overhang, 
on regular supports, they get really thin and break off. That actually happens. So it can be risque when you're using regular supports. There's a lot more ability to tweak them as far as what they reach to and what they touch. As far as bed adhesion goes, I went ahead and used RAF because I'm using a CR-10S Pro. If you're using a glass bed, I recommend doing hairspray and brim. It'll give you a real nice strong adhesion without any lifting. I've been using that for years on some of my other glass bed Creality machines. No issues at all. I do multi-day prints. They still come out with awesome results with great adhesion. But giving you a look here, you can see why it uses more material because it's literally touching every single angle. Again, very adjustable, uh, but I went with the regular supports on this and it turned out really awesome. So there's just a quick overview of my settings. A nice little breakdown to get you some definitely quality prints without consuming too much time. So now that we've got this all sliced and everything, let's take a look and see how good it printed. One big tip before we print, we know when done properly, silk printing can give you unmatched results compared to PLA and PETG. However, silk filaments are a magnet for moisture, so I definitely recommend getting a filament dehydrator and running your filament three to four hours prior to printing and then leaving it in the dehydrator while it's printing. This is gonna pull any moisture out of the filament and keep any moisture from building up in the filament while you're printing. Here's a quick look at some silk filament that's properly dehydrated. You can see the print came out great. It's uniform, there's no impurities, no blemishes. Overall, it looks great. Here you can see this is some filament that wasn't dehydrated. You can see these little zits or these little blips. These are a direct result from moisture being in the filament. This happens to your print, it's pretty much ruined. So definitely go out, get a filament dehydrator, run the filament through there, get it nice and dry, get your prints going. They'll come out looking great every time. Now that we went over that, let's print the Jason mask. And after about one day and 16 hours, we have a successful completed print. So go ahead and start popping those supports off and get it off the build plate. You can see from some of those settings that I mentioned here, those supports pretty much just crumble right off and, and pop right off. Obviously support settings are very important. We don't want it to chew up the model. Uh, you can see here that the model pops right off the build plate. And overall, we have a pretty good looking print. Let's get this moved outside, have a better look and start cleaning this guy up and adding some color to him. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I like to do is go around and just do some general cleanups. We did have a couple supports that kind of blew out. And that's why I said positioning is so, so very important. Had we tried to tilt it this way, um, you can see here that it just built up some stuff here on the inside. And if that was up here, it would be absolutely ruined. Go ahead and just do some minor cleanup. So I'm just going to go through and trim all these excess pieces off. And that's another, uh, you know, another gamble when you are using regular supports. Sometimes when you change your overhang so much, it'll print these really, really thin ones. And as it goes up, they get really wobbly and, and they break. So that is one thing I will say with tree supports is I've really never had that happen. They can save time, uh, but use more material. Tree supports, I've never had that. It'll branch out and get every main point of contact. Uh, structurally, it's a little bit stronger. You can tweak more things with tree supports. Again, um, I will have that in my silk printing part three. Uh, what I like to do too is kind of look at my edge. A little sloppy, I guess. And the best thing you can do with that is just have a soldering iron here and just more or less go along with it. White filament is very hard. So with the soldering iron, when you're doing this technique, if you get a nice clean tip, uh, you can go along, clean up any edges, and you can even take edge here and just smooth it out very lightly. Big tip though, do not do it at a very high temperature at a soldering iron where you can have an adjustable temperature setting. That way you can set this to somewhere around like 170 is a good temperature. And it just, it just kind of smooths it out because if you put too much heat to it, it could sink in or it could push the material and then you're just chasing it. You literally just want to kind of level that down. Uh, you can also take a torch and just throw a little heat to it from a distance. Again, white is very hard. Things like black or darker colors, you can throw heat to them, bring them directly back. You put too much heat on white and it could turn brown, and, you know, off color like yellow. So it's very, very difficult. I don't want to risk it on this one. You know, on this one, I did throw a little bit of heat to it. You can kind of see the pattern that it did. Something like a small torch, soldering iron set on low, clean it up real nice. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add color to this. Obviously on Jason's mask, he has the little red accents here. And it's just a cool touch. I mean, unless you're running a new bamboo, um, you're not gonna be able to print these in red. And realistically, even if you try to put paint on these, it's gonna show the layer lines. You know, printing in silk, there are still layer lines. Uh, they're hidden very well. A lot of it has to do with the reflectivity um, of the filament. But the second you put filler or paint on there, you see them uh, substantially better. So we don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do here is add some vinyl. 
So this is just regular Oracle vinyl. There's tons of companies that make them. I'm gonna lay this over there, hand cut it, contour it to make it fit perfect. Now, especially with silk filaments, they do have a little bit of a sheen, a slickness there. I've mentioned this before that you would never wanna just put paint on top of a silk print because it could reject the paint a little bit. You either wanna sand it or use something like an acid or an etched primer to kind of chemically uh, create something for the paint to grab onto. It's the same thing with a decal here. We wanna create something to grab on so it bonds, it doesn't lift, especially if you're gonna be wearing it at cosplay or maybe exposed to heat or something like that. What we're gonna be using is a vinyl primer pen and basically what this is, it's an adhesion promoter. Holy f it's raining. Uh, this is just used for any time you're doing any sort of vinyl, PPF, anything like that. It's basically an adhesion promoter. Uh, they make a couple different styles of this. This is something that obviously has a ton of liquid in it, so you can use it over and over. If you are more of a one and done kind of person, 3M makes these pre-made pens and they have some liquid in there and what you do is you push this, it cracks the glass holder open that has the fluid, you tip it forward and it goes on the sponge top and you would go ahead and use it. I like keeping a microfiber nearby just cause you don't want this like super, super saturated uh, because we don't want it to run down. This mask does have some very Falling on my head like a memory. So sorry for the, for the rain in the background, a very sharp tip here. So. We don't want to go crazy with this because we don't want this to run. What I usually recommend doing if you're doing anything with a lot of, you know, tight areas is just to get a Q-tip like this. Very easily just kind of transfer some of that liquid and then go around the area. So this stuff will etch the finish. So you do not want to get this on anything that's not going to be covered by the decal go very very slow of where the decal is going to stay so i'm going to do this whole thing with the q-tip just because it's, it's just way too risky top is retractable as soon as you push that down it's going to start spewing liquid out so i wouldn't recommend like tipping it too much stuff does have some fumes so um you know if you're using it for long periods of time you definitely want to wear a respirator like i said it's solvent based so if you're worried about those type of things or you're doing it for long periods of time definitely wear some some sort of pve there this stuff is already pretty much dry I put the vinyl on the mask but we're just doing small pieces here so we just need small pieces so i'm going to get these pieces cut and show you what's in i'm just going to peel them line them up and get them stuck on uh, you don't really need to wear gloves for this. Uh, sometimes it can stick to the nitrile glove. When you're putting the sticker on, just make sure you have clean hands. They're not greasy, oily, or dirty. And we can just go ahead and start putting the stickers on. All right, so now we gotta add a little bit of heat just to get kind of a mold in a sense or get a better look at how we have to cut it. No need for a heat gun, just a regular hair dryer is all you need. You don't wanna introduce too much heat to where we are starting to warp the model. In this case, it's silk PLA, so it's a little bit more fragile than Pet G and some of those other ones. So just a little bit of heat, we'll get a better mold and then get this cut out. And then just put a little bit of force and really try to work it around the area that you're gonna be cutting because we want that very defined. Now you can grab a torch and really add a little bit more heat. Just wanna be careful that you're not doing too much heat little bit on the torch really gave us an awesome outline to where we need to cut. So next we want to take our razor blade and I like cutting them right away. I'm very key to have a very nice outline so you can see what you're doing. there how nice we got that even to where that little chip is i was able to contour around there because the heat sunk that in so good so i'm gonna do this to the rest of it show you guys how it looks now if you have some intricate areas like here there's like this little slash mark that i want to knock out it's good to have like a plastic razor blade just to make that indent a little bit better so I'm gonna go over this a few times with this. 
and then go over it with the real blade. The reason I'm doing this is I don't want to scratch the PLA too much. With white, you won't be able to see it. If you use a dark one and you scratch it too much with the blade, you'll actually see that. So I don't want to get too aggressive. So I'm just kind of going over that to make a little bit better of an indent. I'm going to carve it out with this razor. And then if I need to, I'm going to use my pick tool here just to get it out. So you can see here, spending the time, adding that little bit of extra detail really can go a long way depending on what you're doing. So just a nice, nice little touch there. I think that just makes it look more realistic though. So if this was a regular painted mask, you know, that would be, you know, taken off. Again, it's just the minor details that I like to try to do with everything that I do to make it look as real as possible. This top piece here, I'll kind of cheat and show you on the other piece. It has a big piece that's gone here. So I'm gonna do that on there and then show you both of the pieces here. <laughs> Here, another cheat just by going over it after you throw some heat to it with the plastic razor blade gives you a nice outline of where to cut all right so you can see there it just gives it that nice little contrast that makes it look like a completed piece obviously the combination of the print settings the type of filament and then the added decal, nothing too crazy. It doesn't take a lot of time. So if it's something where you're making like a last minute cosplay or just something to put up on display and you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours of sanding and painting and it looks really cool. I've had a lot of people that have asked to, for me to make them Jason masks uh, since I did my one video. Like this is like my go-to now. It's definitely pretty cool. And then obviously the second one here, uh, you know, you can go ahead and add the snap rivets. And then what I'll do is make the T-strap uh, for the helmet and it'll have the adjustable strap and you will be able to wear it uh, for whatever you want to do or like I said just have it on display so pretty cool technique figured I'd share it with you guys definitely uh, an awesome effect an awesome upgrade you can get to make a plain print look like an awesome print so with all that said and done I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up wrap this video up give you my final thoughts all right guys well, there you have it a uh, combination of nice settings uh, tips and tricks and a little bit of thinking outside of the box. There's no denying the result. This piece came out absolutely awesome. Truly give a different look to your 3D print. You know, if you wanna break from the sanding and the painting and all the aggravation, a uh, nice little trifecta there to give a 3D print a finished look. I've already started coming up with new ideas and messing around with different models, try to integrate some new processes here. So expect an extension of this video and I'll make sure to give you guys some updates and upgrades of what I have coming in the near future. I want to thank Sunlu for supplying the filament for this video. Make sure to check them out. They have a wide variety of filaments, accessories, and all kinds of stuff. And they're actually one of the few companies that makes a silk PLA plus. So if you're looking for that awesome silk effect, but want something that's a little bit more durable, check out Sunlu. I hope you guys liked the video. And if you did, of course, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions on anything in the video, make sure to go ahead and drop me a comment. I am diligently working on silk printing part three. Uh, I just wanted to kind of put this video out here. A short recap for some people who are maybe looking to get into silk printing or struggling with it. Obviously I have silk printing part one and part two. Part three is gonna be a little bit longer. I'm gonna cover a lot more things that I touched on with tree supports, positioning, cooling, things like that. So make sure you click the subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know when that video drops. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank God the rain held out for the outro. So I'm gonna try to wrap this thing up and get moving on to my next project. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video, drop the comment with any questions, and don't forget to click that subscribe button. And until next time, DW out, later.